This is Brian Carlton for ABN Newswire. I'm at the November Symposium Resources Roadshow from Westpac HQ in Sydney, where companies operating in the resources sector take the opportunity to pitch their wares at potential investors. One man with a deserved reputation for rewriting the rules of what can be mined and from where, as the founder of Undersea Miner Nautilus Minerals, and literally rewriting the rules as to how the resources industry communicates. It's always a pleasure talking to Julian Malnick, now the executive chairman and founder of Direct Nickel, a company he believes can become the largest nickel company on earth. Welcome again to ABN Newswire, Julian. Oh, thank you, Brian. It's a big claim, but I know you're dead serious. Well, we, uh, we uh, are very uh, keen, I guess, as always. Um, we, we're innovators. We, lead the, we like to lead the world. I, I wonder what gets into us sometimes, but we are, I think, uh, again, positioning to make more history. Uh, this time we'd like to uh, rewrite why nickel is, is produced and we're very advanced in a, a new process, which we're, gonna, process. which we're going to talk about now. Quick backgrounder. We're running out of the scarce, but till now, cheaper to process nickel sulphides. Yep, right. correct. Okay. But we're awash with nickel laterite reserves that haven't really been economically viable again until now. Is that, mm. is that a fair assessment? Well, the, the, any observer of the uh, global nickel space would know that there have been uh, uh, firstly, as you say, sulphides are diminishing in discovery. We've got 120 years of supply in, in the laterite style of resource. It's a very shallow, um, uh, flat-lying type of deposit. We often find it in the, more entirely find it in the tropical, well-watered uh, topographies. And uh, yes, we have 120 years supply, and we now, they've been, all of the metallurgies till now have been challenged. They've been niche metallurgies metallurgical processes, I should say, uh, correct English. Uh, and uh, ours is now the first universal process. Uh, we're in a uh, demonstration stage now. Uh, yes, we face a lot of scepticism because it is a big claim, but uh, that's we're now really no, embracing I, I, I like big claims. Big claims give you something to look forward to. Now, mm -hmm. um, nickel's primarily for the uninitiated used in the production of stainless steel, which is in huge demand and growing. Yes. Uh, China consumes half of the world's nickel, most of that into stainless steel. Uh, I mean, So we're talking kitchen sinks and laundry tubs? That's it. Motor vehicles? Uh, you've, you've probably seen the modern wineries have large stainless vats, uh, uh, petroleum refineries, uh, the white goods, as you say, are big consumers, and uh, it is really a... Uh, and architecture is also, uh, you know, the, yes, the, the, the yeah. civic uh, uh, jewellery of, of Asia, handrails, building facades, etc. Okay. So, yeah. Now, direct nickels come up with a cost-effective and really efficient way of processing nickel mm. laterites. Low mm. temperature, ambient pressure, almost magic. The... Um, uh, I guess part of the difficulty in, uh, we, as I said, people are rightfully sceptical of, of the new and nowhere more than in the mining sector. But uh, if you were to go through and uh, tick the, the, you know, go down the list and tick all the dream properties, um, they are the properties that our process has. So it's very uh, fast, uh, hydrometallurgical process, tank leaches, does the whole nickel later laterite profile. There are two layers characteristically, uh, iron and magnesium rich, mm -hmm. limonite saprolite, does the whole profile. And uh, we recycle the reagent and uh, yeah, well, there's a, a list of, of points that are all ticked. And, so and how did you stumble across this technology? <laughs> <laughs> Is that the correct term, stumbling, stumbling across it? No. <laughs> did you go out and see, did you realise it was there? Or what, what, was the, what was the light bulb? Uh, we uh, have worked very hard. Uh, we identified some precursor processes. We've spent uh, $14 million over the last uh, three years stumbling across it. And we've um, taken some precursor processes that we used in the chemical processing industry in the United States. And... Um, and we took those precursor processes and developed the direct nickel process. There had been some early pilot work done in, in nickel, uh, but we've completely translated that into a new process and we're now uh, absolutely confident that we have a, a robust and elegant uh, chemical process. And we're now in the demonstration stage so that we can build a plant that people can walk around and, uh, and physically see this continuous uh, process producing nickel. Whereabouts is the test plant? We have been, uh, uh, one of our shareholders is Tech Resources, the major Canadian miner, and we have been discussing with Tech for a long time the building of a plant at their uh, facility in, in Vancouver. 
but we've now taken a decision to uh, build it in Perth and the okay. CSIRO has invested uh, just around $2 million towards that plant. And, now, that's uh, not a grant, that's an investment in the company. Yeah, yeah, and I okay. think that... Um, it's an important distinction, isn't it, really? Well, I kind of think so. I mean, if you, if you get, it means that they're, they're, uh, they've looked over us with a normal degree of care, but they're also um, uh, chained to that um, relationship uh, and very happy to be so. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so I, I think it is. A, 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 I feel better that it's a uh, investment and not uh, corporate welfare, if you like. Yeah, indeed. Now, you mm. explained last we spoke that you're not really interested in simply licensing the technology and, no. uh, and kind of moving to Bermuda to sit under a tree. <laughs> so you're actively sourcing re resource partners. You're getting involved in actually digging the stuff out of the ground and processing yeah, it with existing players, new players, Greenfields. Yeah, well, we're, it a, we're a... Um, we're a nickel company. We've always positioned ourselves as a nickel company, and uh, to that extent, we uh, you did right. Uh, we want to dig holes, process, and and make the world's lowest cost nickel, both lowest capex and lowest opex uh, nickel. So um, we're announcing uh, today that uh, we have um, we are now kicking off a a 50/50 joint venture we, we've had on foot uh, for a, a year with a uh, AIM listed company, Regency Mines. And we now, it's, uh, the project area is in Papua New Guinea, project name Mambari. Now you've got some experience there, haven't you, with Nautilus? Yeah, operating you know, PNG. We've, uh, yeah. We've been, Nautilus has been the largest explorer in, in Papua New Guinea for, for several years, I believe. It's uh, certainly uh, well, uh, well recognised for its, um, uh, ma you know, I mean, major discovery. So what are the benefits of the uh, Regency deal? You. Well, oh well. I mean, we the the, the thing is, it's sort of two-sided. Uh, firstly, we we're, we're kicking off and going in to start drilling immediately, so forthwith, uh, weather permitting. And uh, that's and then the other part is uh, Regency is investing six million dollars into a uh, current placement that we have, which really uh, will accelerate the demonstration and uh, is a great. Uh, vote of confidence in the you know market perception of our state of development of our process. So part of the benefit I would imagine for companies who will uh, get into some sort of joint venture with you or some kind of partnership mm. is it would inherently increase the value of their company if they're sitting on laterite reserves that were hitherto unusable or expensive mm -hmm. to get out and process. Is, is there a benefit there where you're seeing literally the, uh, the, the value of their companies rising as well based on, this, on the, on oh, the yeah. direct nickel well, technology? That is actually a, um, a very, um, very interesting question because uh, uh, unless companies have an arrangement with us and we allow us to share in the resource with them, because we're a nickel company, yep. as I said, yep. uh, if, unless we're in partnership with them, they won't have access to this process, which is IP protected and patented and... Uh, and very um, secret. Yeah, no, well, it has a lot of uh, aspects that take a lot of know-how and it's... Uh, so we, we've got a very good IP strategy and we, we you know, we want to translate that into a, uh, a big uh, uh, advantage and get ahead and stay ahead. Would that require the, uh, the Regency deal require the construction of a, a commercial size plant? Yeah. Well, yep. in, uh, in, in PNG? Well, well uh, I mean, we explore to mine. Yep. And uh, the eventual outcome is that we would uh, drill out a, um, a large-scale resource, and we have uh, every indication that there is the Mambari uh, nickel project resource, uh, uh, certainly from early pitting and drill, drilling work, uh, could easily be a world-class deposit, so uh, may contain uh, 5 million tonnes of, of contained metal. So it's a wow. Okay. So, what about the setup costs of the actual plant? Is it a relatively cheap thing to build? Uh, well, nothing's uh, cheap in no, mining, no, 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 no. but, uh, but, but, but I, I, compared but to some of the alternative no, I'll technologies, take, I'll take your point. Yeah. Uh, we always uh, take a breath before we mention capital figures in, in, in the mining business. But compared to the other processes, the the uh, for example, pressure acid leach, which was the uh, process used at Ravensthorpe. Uh, and uh, ferro-nickel smelting. Uh, we're looking at a, a capital cost per unit of annual production, mm -hmm. so per pound yep. of annual production, of, of below half. I mean, essentially, ours is welding rod construction, so no furnaces, no autoclaves, no titanium, unobtanium, all these exotic metals. Yep. We're, we're in a 304 stainless steel uh, construction and uh, uh, welding rod, so it's a, it's a fairly... Um, 
A straightforward construction proposition. You'd be looking at an IPO at some stage? How far away? Well, uh, we, we are, we have been. We've been uh, also been looking at a, a Hong Kong uh, uh, shell recently. Okay. Uh, so we're fairly open-minded. We certainly see there's a great ch synergy with China. China's consuming half of the uh, global nickel. And uh, there's certainly a depth of uh, investment interest in China. So uh, ASX, uh, Hong Kong Stock Exchange, uh, you know, we're, uh, we, we're, uh, we're still private. We've hung on. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, I, you know, I, I think that um, both of them are, are good answers. So your, your, your big Regency announcement obviously increases the value of, uh, of direct nickel. What's it, what's it valued at today? Well, it, it, uh, we, what the agreed value, uh, what it's really valued at, we have no idea. Right. What, what's, it, what's a process worth that changes the entire nickel business? Uh, for the purpose of this transaction, it values us at uh, 75 million uh, US, and uh, we would, um, uh, which is the same as the CSIRO investment was made at. So it's, uh, we, it's, I don't think it's an inflated price. It was uh, mm -hmm. well struck. And uh, but um, you know now in the demonstration stage, I think this is the time for the the big uplift. Are you getting any nervous feedback from the uh, from the nickel sulfide guys who are so suddenly realising that maybe <laughs> their uh, their business is not quite as valuable as it once was? Uh, they're a uh, fairly resolute mob, Brian. It takes a, 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 a bit to to uh, wake them up, uh, but we uh, it, the realisation will come. Uh, I don't think uh, anyone's uh, shaking in their boots at the moment, but uh, wait for it. Wait for it. I, you know, I think we. Uh, I see no reason why I've said it before. Why we shouldn't be the the large, with an advantage as we have. Why we shouldn't be the world's ni largest nickel company. So, Julian Malnick, founder, executive chairman of Direct Nickel. Thanks so much for joining me again today. Yeah, great. Well, uh, thank you. This is Brian Carlton for ABN Newswire.